Now at 11, the Blazers open the season with a rematch and blow a nearly two-decade streak. We'll break down the good, the bad, and the ugly from tonight's home opener. And later, Burgerville's union workers walk off the job and begin a strike. The demands they have for the local fast food chain before they'll go back to work. But first, soon to be voted most likely to save a life because these three high schoolers already did. This is KGW News at 11. It's a miracle that, um, first of all, that my kids were here and I wasn't home alone. Um, it probably would have been a very different outcome and that the girls were driving by at just the right moment. And this is our top story tonight. An incredible one out of Clark County. Three teenagers in the right place at the right time, saving a woman's life. That woman was suffering from a heart defect. When her kids ran outside, they flagged down the high schoolers who happened to be driving by, and they rushed inside. KGW's Mike Benner spoke with everyone there that day. Mike, wow, wow, yeah, what a story. Yeah, Laurel, wow indeed. Two of these teenagers are from Hawkinson High School. The third is from Prairie High School. They performed CPR on Ashley Eggleston until first response responders arrived. Had they not started CPR, it is not a stretch to say this woman could have died. Here's what happened in their own words. So it was just a normal day. It was supposed to be a normal day. I heard a loud bang and then I went over there and she was on the floor. What I hear is that I was eating like a breakfast or lunch in here. Yeah, I tried talking like, are you okay? Like what happened? And then, yeah, I realized that she needed help. And he's like, help, my mom fell. And so we stopped the car in the middle of the road. And it's still running. We all run inside. And we saw Ashley laying on the dining room floor. I called 911 um, while they were, like, trying to figure out what to do. When we saw her the first time when she was on the ground, it was, like, almost like she wasn't a person. When we got there, she was breathing. We could tell she, and um, by the time I talked to the operator, she wasn't breathing anymore. It was scary, but I'm like really good at holding in my emotions. And so she like told me how to put my hands and where to put them. And then she counted like a beat or rhythm. And you were doing CPR? Yeah, till the first responders got here. Well, I had had um, heart palpitations, which is just like a, it would kind of skip a beat sometimes, like almost on a daily basis. And that's happened for like eight years. I've felt it and it's just become normal to me. Um, but this time it, it got into an arrhythmia that was so bad where um, it just wasn't pumping blood. We were meant to be there, I guess, yeah. Just, I told my mom that now I have another sister. I felt like everybody was right where they needed to be, right at the right moment, and I, I imagine us keeping in touch from here on out. How can you not keep in touch after something like this? Pretty incredible. Ashley Eggleston spent almost a week in the hospital. She now has a defibrillator in her body should this happen again. One more thing worth mentioning, there are rumblings that Hawkinson High School will honor these life-saving girls at Do an upcoming, uh, upcoming school assembly, yes. and uh, I think that is well-deserved. Yes, maybe the Sheriff's Department. I mean, right. who knows? They, they wow. deserve awards, that's for sure. Congratulations to them. The composure of young people sometimes mm -hmm. shocks me. Makes you feel really yeah. good about right. things. Thank you, Mike. with a jam. First, we're going to show you the good. Let that play linger with you for a little bit. That's named Monster Dunk in the first quarter. Now we're going to get to the bad. Ooh, the Blazers blew their streak tonight of 18 straight home opener wins with a 108 to 100 loss to the Nuggets. KGW's Orlando Sanchez joins us live now. Now that doesn't mean it wasn't still a great night at the motor, right, Orlando? Right? Oh, yeah. Right? Of Silver course. lining, Orlando. There's... Orlando, give it to us. Yeah, of course. I mean, there's plenty of good to talk about, but it's just a tough way to open up season number 50 when you're so hyped up about basketball returning to Rip City. But as they say, all good things, you know, must come to an end. That streak of 18 goes all the way back to the 2000-2001 season. The year 2000, rookie Nasir Little was born that year. So it tells you how long the Blazers have been winning home openers here in Rip City. But they ran into an opponent that knows them all too well, and it came down to crunch time, but it's the Denver Nuggets leaving Portland with a victory. They're back. Game number one, season number 50. Rip City rocking. Blazers versus Nuggets. Seven new faces on the roster for Portland, including Hassan Whiteside. Two the strong way for the first points of the season. The man had a double-double before halftime. A bully in the paint. 16 points, 19 rebounds. 
Highlight of the night belongs to the letter O. Damian Lillard throw it down. Lillard dropped a game high 32 points. Portland climbed to a 12 point lead. Nuggets returned the favor with a 10 point first half lead of their own. But the game was decided in the fourth quarter. Back and forth down the stretch, but Nikola Jokic took over in crunch time. Back to back three pointers and Portland couldn't recover. Denver shot 56% from long range, hit 18 threes, while the Blazers struggled at 25%. Huge difference in the game. Nuggets win 108-100. First time Portland has lost a home opener since the 2000-2001 season. You know, it sucks, but one game, it's the, the home streak or whatever is over now, and, you know, we move forward. Yeah, it's tough. Um, we had a chance to win it down the stretch. We just didn't execute, didn't get enough stops, but um, we still got 81 games left, so you know, we got a lot that we can improve upon and we'll try to start another streak. It's tough. Obviously, it's game. It's game one. You know, in the, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal. But um, yeah, it definitely. You know, we obviously would want to keep that streak going. We want to win the game, but it is what it is. Guys, as expected, the crowd was rocking here at the Moda Center. Energy all the way up for the first game of the year. Hassan Whiteside even saying after his big game that that was one of the best crowds that he had ever experienced in his career. So a lot of excitement to take away. But now the Blazers have to go on the road for their next four games. They won't be back here until November 2nd. Guys, we'll send it back to you. Orlando, thank you. Let's just be excited. Basketball is back, right? Appreciate it. 18 in foster care has now been missing for two weeks. And today we're hearing from his foster mom, who's pretty desperate to find him at this point. We first told you about 16-year-old Doug Fawoa last night. He left his home in Albany on October 10th. He was set to spend three months at the in-home for boys in Clackamas County. He told staff there that he was going to walk to the Clackamas Town Center, and then he never came back. Doug's foster mom and a lot of others have expressed some frustration that Doug's story wasn't getting more media attention, so we really wanted to find out why that was. Now, law enforcement didn't mention anything to the media, including our newsroom, because Doug was reported as a runaway, not a missing person. DHS also wouldn't confirm that he was missing until this past Monday because they were kind of confused over what they could and could not say under state law since he's in foster care. State Senator Sarah Gelser tweeted about her concerns over how this was being handled and brought some more widespread attention to the case. Carol Palmer hopes that it's enough to bring him home. I just want him to know that he still has his home and I want him to come home. And I'm worried. You see Doug's picture here. He's five foot nine. He weighs 160 pounds. He was last seen wearing gray jeans, a gray or white hoodie and a black vest. There is a search planned for Saturday morning at the Safeway on Sunnyside Road. Searchers are going to meet at about 10 a.m. If you've seen him or you have any information, call the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. State police and Lynn County major crimes teams are investigating after a driver in Albany died this morning after police used a taser on him. Tonight we've learned his name is James Plymel III. Police say officers tried to take him into custody and there was a physical altercation. That's when an officer used the taser. The man lost consciousness and died at the scene. Oregon State Police are asking anyone who may have been with Plymel over the past two days or anyone who saw the incident today to contact them. Just because we've done a focused sweep today doesn't mean that the other 364 days of the year we're not out there looking. Every minute, data shows about 20 people are physically abused by an intimate partner in the U.S. In an effort to end that, law enforcement here at home and around the country hit the streets to track down and arrest people accused of domestic violence. Our Morgan Romero followed officers in Washington County as they knocked on doors to try to protect survivors. As she shows us, it proved to be a challenge. Law enforcement's role is paramount in, in combating domestic violence. We're the first responders uh, when that 911 call is made regarding domestic violence. To combat a problem that affects so many Americans, these agencies join forces to do as their hashtag says, an end DV. Domestic violence knows no bounds. It knows no socioeconomic bounds, no religious bounds, no racial bounds. For the past few years, law enforcement in Washington County has done this sweep during Domestic Violence Awareness Month. This isn't a one month problem. This is a year round problem that we deal with every day. The officers that we're out following today in Washington County are looking to make contact with or arrest around 50 or so suspected domestic violence offenders. We're also out here today to show to the survivors of domestic violence 
that we are committed to protecting them, that they, their bravery in standing up and saying, no more, I'm not going to be a victim any longer, I'm going to become a survivor, that we're going to support that. Police and sheriff's officers tried tracking down people with outstanding family violence warrants. They checked on survivors, and they looked for probation or parole violators who took off without permission. Domestic disputes are one of our most common calls that we respond to. We trailed Hillsborough PD. Go ahead. As they tried taking in suspects on warrants, probable cause, or restraining order violations. Well, we know he's been there because they have, a, they have him coming in and out on camera, so we'll try again later. The first two stops, the suspects weren't home. The third, an alleged restraining order violation from a few months back. We have to make arrest. It is a mandatory arrest. When we tell someone that this order will help protect you, we have to back it up. This time, so, I need to talk to Tim. the cuffs came out. Your of your restraining order by staying here, okay? While they didn't get everyone on their list, officers don't see it as a knock. That we're showing people that we're out there. We're out there looking for people who have committed domestic violence crimes um, to arrest them and take them into custody. Uh, if we didn't find them today, we will continue to look. Morgan Romero, KGW News. If you need to talk to an advocate, reach out to the National Domestic Violence Hotline. The number right now is at the bottom of your screen, 1-800-799-7233. You can also live chat with them online. The hotline is open 24-7 and all calls are confidential and anonymous. Union workers at four Burgerville locations in Portland began a strike today. This is the store near the convention center. Workers from other unionized locations also came to join the picket. The workers have demanded wage increases and the union says negotiations fell apart last week. I have coworkers who struggle to make rent every month. I have coworkers uh, who struggle to buy groceries. I have coworkers at other Burgervilles who sometimes have to walk several miles to and from work because they can't afford bus passes. That's a huge problem and a company that allows that to persist is a deeply immoral company. A Burgerville spokesperson said the four striking locations will stay open since not all workers walked off the job. A fifth Burgerville store in Gladstone has unionized, but as of today, employees there were not striking. A hiker is back on his feet after a 100-foot fall thanks to a 911 call he didn't know he was making. Still ahead tonight, how a safety feature on his Apple Watch made sure first responders could get to him. But first, a zombie alert. These undead can't walk, but they could be in your backyard. How to spot a zombie tree before it causes some serious damage. Next. And the trees are lit up in fall colors, and we've got some great weather to see them, including the great post-sunset post light out of the Oregon coast. And again, a warm day on the way tomorrow, warmest in a week, but a oh boy, we got some great weather coming.